Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Community Journal. Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate you tuning us in. And uh, Eileen, I can't believe we are in the month of April now. I can't either. Oh, my goodness. April Fool's Day was Monday. Yes, and it was. We know it. It'll be Easter and Passover and just amazing. Yeah, we hope you didn't get fooled too badly on April Fool's Day. But uh, <laughs> we did get quite a bit of rain a couple of nights ago. Or was it last night? No, two nights ago. We had uh, about an inch and a quarter in, uh, in Harwich, which is a pretty good deal. And not too far from here, they actually had a little bit of snow. Um, That's right, they yeah, did, yeah, yes. Yeah, they did, so uh, we were lucky again. We've had a lucky winter and... Um, yes, remember it because yeah. <laughs> you know what might happen next year. You never know, but uh, it has been a very lucky winter and uh, I think totally, I think we've only had, uh, at least in our part of Howwich that we live in, we've only had about five inches of snow the whole winter, which is amazing. That is amazing. That's unusual. So we are now into spring and... Uh, uh, the flowers are starting to come up. I saw um, uh, some tulips coming up. I yes. saw, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Hosta. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. hosta are popping through. So we're really uh, on the road now, that's for I sure. Think so. Well, our first uh, spot uh, this week, uh, speaking of flowers and uh, all the beautiful things here in Harwich, is an interview over with the Community Trust, uh, I mean, the Conservation Trust, with Michael and Tyler. And they sat down with Dinah. So let's take a look and see what's going on with the Conservation Trust. Hello. Here with the Harwich Conservation Trust people again for their update. It's Michael Locke and Tyler McCass, and uh, we're delighted to have you here as always. Thanks for having us. Good morning, Dana. Good morning. <coughs> um, and I understand you had some very successful events just in the last couple of weeks. Maybe we should talk about those first. Sure, yes, I, we, yes. I got a chance to view the owls a little bit. Oh, you did. I, I want to hear more about what the actual presentation was like. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was uh, two programs uh, this year, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m., right in the Harvard Community Center uh, gym. Uh, each um, accommodated over 400 people, uh, ages five and up, um, and um, elementary school students to senior citizens and everybody in between. Um, sometimes multiple um, ages, gener three generations from the same family at times. It was great. It's such a wonderful event. Uh, generates such enthusiasm and um, uh, educational aspects to learning about owl biology and behavior and their habits and the conservation of their habitats. Marsha and Mark Wilson um, touched down with their owls. Uh, there's a barn <laughs> owl there. These owl photos uh, contributed by Linda Bowden in town um, to one of our volunteer photographers that day. Actually, she was uh, uh, one of the um, guests at the, at the program, one of the folks who, who um, uh, purchased the ticket, and then she uh, volunteered her photos later. They're incredible. So we look forward to, to um, working with uh, um, Linda in the future for more of her photography. There's a bard, owl, B-A-R-R-E-D. Look at those dark, um, uh, eyes and the beautiful um, gray plumage. So Mark and Marsha had, and that's beautiful snowy owl, had these owls uh, up to seven different species plus a uh, kestrel, um, a small raptor uh, for something a little different from um, owl, um, the owl family. Uh, and Marsha and Mark walked around, as you can see, with these owls um, on their gloved hands. Uh, these were all shot during the presentation. Yeah, these were photos taken amazing. from the presentation. Yeah. By Linda. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. It's amazing. Wonderful. She is a wonderful photographer. Yes, yeah. yes. And so uh, Marsha and Mark walked around with these owls to give folks up close um, views and, um, and also there were some hooting lessons where <laughs> Marsha would imitate the calls of these various owls and volunteers would come up and uh, respond or actually try the calls and see if the owls would respond to them. It was fun, wasn't it, Tyler? It was great, yeah. yeah. Everybody Over. loves owls, and they are endlessly fascinating. There are so many different ones. Really yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Remarkable. Yes. Remarkable. And AmeriCorps was a huge help. They were very helpful, so yes. As well as our event volunteers uh, helping to staff tables and mm -hmm. uh, set up and close down. and. I also want to do a shout out to uh, Dan here, uh, uh, um, custodian at the community center. He is fantastically supportive, mm -hmm. and um, he was—he's been there for almost every one of our winter talks, 
uh, and then helping with this OWL program. Um, so a big, big thanks to Dan yes. and everybody here at the Community Center. It's great to have that kind of support. Mm -hmm. and I think yeah. everyone got enthusiastic about that. Yes. Everyone who was around seemed to be really into it. Yes. The young people who were helping the AmeriCorps group. Yes, the yeah. Group. And, yep. and uh, save the date for next year, 2020. Okay. Uh, first uh, <laughs> Saturday in March. Uh, okay. I think it's March 7th. Um, but anyways, we have a long ways uh, mm -hmm. until then. But um, we'll have them back. Great. Yeah. yeah. I understand they're moving a little bit further away. They mentioned that, but that they would that, definitely be coming. That's right. Yeah. They, they love their Cape visit. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. excellent. Yeah. So, and we love to have them. Mm. Okay. So uh, you have, you also did something about farmers. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yes. We had a, a Meet Your Local Farmers event, 10th annual, again, right here in the community center. Mm -hmm. Thank you, community center. People also, I want to say, uh, Marvel at the community center mm -hmm. who aren't familiar with the area or out of town. Um, and just see it as a, such a wonderful resource. So yes. we're lucky here in Harwich. Uh, up to 50 different farming I exhibitors and farm supporting organizations. A mm. um, thousand people came between noon and three to visit this event, this free event. Last year we were in the high 700s, so Jeepers, uh, what is that? Wow. Another t sort of a 25% increase in, in attendance. Um, you can see a lilac uh, hedge farm here. Doug McComber of East Harwich um, staffed that table uh, and folks um, asking questions of their local farmers, learning about the products each farmer uh, creates. We had local uh, civic groups like the Garden Club of Harwich there, uh, Harwich Historical Society, a variety of local farms right here in Harwich including Pleasant Lake Farm, Cape Cod Lavender Farm, Tuckaway Farm in North Harwich. Uh, and then uh, farms from across the Cape. Uh, mm -hmm everywhere from Sandwich um, out to Truro, uh, and uh, even a local coffee roaster of West Dennis, uh, Three Fins Coffee Roasters. Mm -hmm. So um, they, they were, were a great um, addition to the event as well. And um, Cranberry Harvest uh, was there with their various jellies and jams you can see on their display here. Uh, one fellow, uh, oh here, <laughs> these are great, from Seawind Meadows, the Scottish Highland Cattle. Look at that, right? Mm -hmm. um, a calf and an adult here. Um, so we had farm animals. We never know what we're going to uh, see that day. Um, the farmer who brings most of them, besides Seawind Meadows, there's also a Bob Speakman of Oak Tree Farm who brings a variety of animals. And, um, and then there was Hammersmith Farms who brought uh, Finn the horse. We had a horse for the first time. And um, they brought them right into the gym. Yeah, we had the uh, gym floor yeah. tarped. Uh, <laughs> made sure it was safe um, right. for um, the facility uh, and uh, people just had a wonderful time meeting greeting learning more about uh, local farming um, so it's a great kickoff to spring it is and we appreciate our, our co-sponsorship of that event with um, the Cape Islands Farm Bureau mm. that this event is mm. brought to you by the Cape Islands Farm Bureau and the um, Harwich Conservation Trust uh, so um, it's just yeah, it's a great way to kick off the spring growing season and yeah. kind of shake off that winter cabin fever. Gets everyone very excited. It really does. Yeah. So yeah, another wonderful time. Great. Mm. Good. And then you have a couple of things coming up. Spring is a busy time. We have the herring count, right, Tyler? Yep. <laughs> yeah. um, since 2009, we've been counting herring on the Herring River, um, and we're going to continue this year, volunteer-led effort, and. Um, Begins April 1st. So, um, no joke. Yeah, it's coming <laughs> it's right, right up. It's right upon us. Fish will be migrating soon, fingers crossed. Uh, as soon as the water temperature hits about 50 degrees, um, we should see some fish moving. The first initial scouts. Uh, there's two different species that, um, of these anadromous fish. We have uh, blueback herring and alewife. Uh, and our volunteer counters don't try to distinguish them, but um, they, um, they school with sea herring um, in the ocean, and then they undertake this unique migration to mm. brackish and freshwater bodies um, for spawning. Mm -hmm. and, and you've then, already had a, a um, first meeting, I understand, with people who are interested in volunteering, is that right? Yes, uh, we had our kickoff meeting. Um, and uh, many of our shifts are covered, um, but we do have some room for additional volunteers if that's of interest. Um, the count 
period is an hour and 20 minutes and a uh, volunteer counter counts fish or no fish <laughs> for 10 minutes during that period. And uh -huh. uh, zero. So it's like a relay. Zero is still a good number. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, okay. So people do it for 10 minutes at a time. That's but right. But they sign that's up right. for an hour and 20 minutes. Is that what you said? Within that block, yes. they can count 10 minutes. That's oh, correct. Oh, right. I, yes. see. So, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And last year, our counters uh, counted 5,489 fish in 498 observations. So it's quite an effort. Um, this data is sent to the Division of Marine Fisheries. They do some calculations to estimate the run size um, at that location. So the number they had there was 47,698 fish. However, we know that there are many more fish migrating. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's an electronic counter at uh, Bell's Neck at the Western Reservoir that the Division of Marine Fisheries also manages. And that counted 800,000 fish last year. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of fish might be migrating at night when our volunteer counters aren't out there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Sounds yeah. like they are. They're not going to wait for people to come and watch them. Right, yeah. Or right. catch them. <laughs> uh, there is a moratorium on herring, uh, uh -huh. so you cannot catch them. Right. I uh, just want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Harwich was a leader in that regard. They were the first town on the Cape to have a moratorium on herring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the state later followed with their mm -hmm. outright ban on herring. Right. Mm -hmm. aren't, isn't there, aren't the Indian tribes allowed to do some catching of herring, or am I wrong about that? That's correct. Uh, they have Aboriginal rights, um, but the tribal member does have to have tribal ID. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's fascinating, and it's, again, very soon. Very mm -hmm. soon. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So if anybody wants to... Uh, join this join effort, the yeah, the volunteer counting effort. They can reach out to Tyler at HCT and um, yep. and, and participate. Right. Sign up for it. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah. Figure out where you'll be placed and when. Right. Yep. That's okay. right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Excellent. And then I know you have your annual Tour de Trash. Tour de Trash. Is Isn't that right? a great name? It is. Oh, that name. <laughs> Tour de Trash. That's Thanks, coming up. Thanks, Terry Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> April 27th, and uh, Tyler's really been taking the lead along with our AmeriCorps member, Ben, ben Cockrell, yeah. uh, coordinating this event. How's mm -hmm. it going? It's great. Um, you are able to now sign up for a route online, uh, reg so registration is open. Last year, we had uh, 29 different routes throughout the town of Harwich. Mm. It's a town-wide cleanup. Um, uh, principally roads, but um, some woodland edges and beaches also. Do people uh, suggest new routes uh, when they talk to you about it, or are, do you already have established places that you definitely want people to do? Uh, the Tour to Trash Committee has pretty much decided on the routes. Um, I it's see. Where okay. It's where litter tends to congregate mm -hmm. and where we have enough of a shoulder along the road for it to be safe for people mm. yes. to pick up the litter. Um, some of the less safe locations, the highway department will, will clean, like the, uh, the exit off ramps. We don't do those. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had uh, over 130 volunteers this year, so we expect hopefully to hit 150 this year. Wow. Mm. And uh, over a ton of trash collected last year. That's and right, you a ton. Have scales, is wow. that right? At the at the different locations, you have scales. The highway department generously donates a roll off, mm -hmm. uh, which they drop off, and then mm -hmm. they weigh it when they bring it back. I see. Uh -huh. This big dumpster, roll off dumpster. Big right. roll off dumpster, right. and um, our AmeriCorps members they weigh the. Um, amount of recycling also and mm. there was over 600 pounds wow. of materials um, mm. in 2018 that, wow. that was able to be recycled last year Nauset Disposal um, always generously donates a recycling roll-off dumpster each year uh -huh. so that's uh, very helpful and very generous of them and very instructive mm. <laughs> in terms of what people are throwing mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's really mm -hmm. important uh, yeah. This year, we were lucky track. enough to also receive a $1,000 grant from the United Way. Oh. So um, yes. that's going to help us make it bigger and better than ever. Yes. Yeah. Well, we certainly want to keep our 
our Cape Cod clean. Yeah. It's such an important such an important thing for all of our quality of life and for the environment. Yes, so yeah, good spring wonderful, cleaning. Wonderful effort. Yes, it is. Mm. It's just another aspect of spring cleaning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, anything else on your minds today, or are we pretty much queued up for the next couple of events? We are queued up with okay. this, especially with uh, Tour de Trash on April 27th. People can, yes. again, sign yes. up at uh, harborchconservationtrust.org, our website. Okay. And um, okay. it's a wonderful volunteer event. Thanks for having us. Good. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming. This is Dinah Lane for Channel 18 uh, in Harwich. Thank you so much. Well, we certainly thank uh, Michael Locke and Tyler Mycat sitting down with Dinah taking time out of their busy schedule. And boy, are they busy. And uh, again, the photographs, um, you know, amazing. just, just All amazing. All of those different owls, just uh, amazing. Yeah, the first, the first point, I have to say this. The first portion of that piece was such a hoot. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. Put on bump. Oh boy! But uh, just amazing. The that owl show really is something. Yes, and we've, we've seen, seen it, it and, and it's excellent. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Plus, the rest of the piece was wonderful too. But but that especially. Eileen, what do you have there? Oh, I have plenty of things, Jack. But oh, I'm going to start with Art Week, which I'm sure you've heard about, uh, not only around our town but around the Cape and also around the state. Art Week is going to be held from April 26th to May 5th. It's presented by Highland Street Foundation and produced by the Bach Center. Art Week is a statewide festival featuring hundreds of unique and creative experiences that support art in communities. And here, our very own Guild of Harwich artists have come up with a great idea for it. They are inviting us to support for only $25 a community art project during that week. The Guild of Harwich Artists are creating a community-painted, quote, mystery painting puzzle, unquote, that qualified as an Art Week event, ensuring statewide exposure and promotion for your business. But they need your support to make it happen. What is the mystery painting puzzle? A Harwich image will be painted in small panels by 48 members of the community who may have never held a paintbrush. Oh, wow. What an experience. Yeah, that's good. The final composite artwork will hang in the Harwich Welcome Center lobby during 2019, along with a list of a painters and panel sponsors. How to help. They are asking you and us to sponsor one panel for $25. Your tax-deductible donation allows them to purchase supplies and publicize the event. The event will be held on Saturday, May 4th, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the Harwich Cultural Center. If you are interested, please mail a check for $25 made out to Guild of Harwich Artists, P.O. Box 382, Harwich Fort Mass, 02646. And also the envelope will have Guild of Harwich Artists um, uh, as part of the address. So mm -hmm. you will use that twice. So thank you in advance from the Guild of Harwich Artists. I hope those of you who can help will do so. And Very that's good. my first announcement. <laughs> Very good. More to follow. More to follow. Very good. Well, I've got one to uh, follow your first announcement. Okay. Um, this one uh, happens. It happens um, uh, not very often. So this is a reschedule, actually. Uh, our library, the, the Brooks Library, uh, which they've done a gorgeous job in the exterior. They are now going to get a whole building generator. Now this is being uh, rescheduled. Wow. The confirmed date for the electrical work for the installation of the full building generator is Monday, April 8th. That was, uh, that's a change from what it originally was. They'll be without power that day, so the library will be closed for one day. They will reopen at the normal 10 a.m. opening time on Tuesday, April 9th. So the library is going to get a full whole building generator. So that's, wow. that's great. Wow, very much needed. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I'm so, glad uh, for Good it. luck with that job. Hope it goes smoothly and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just close one day. That's pretty good. I know. It's, Let's hope it stays that way. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm sure it will. Um, our next piece uh, uh, today um, the Howard Police Department is uh, sponsoring a youth soccer program, mm. uh, which is really great. Bob Brackett is involved with this. He sat down with Dinah. And um, there's going to be also a one-minute clip 
of the championships, which took place on March 30th. So uh, pretty great soccer program there. So uh, the police department is sponsoring that. They sat down with Dinah to give us a look. So let's take a look at what's going on there. Hello, I'm here with Bobby Brackett, who is a Harwich policeman, detective, sergeant, Bobby Brackett. And uh, he is here to talk with us about the uh, soccer program that he and some others run at the police department. Um, Good morning. So it's so nice to see you. Thank you very much. I'm um, happy to be here. Yeah, great. Can you uh, tell me a little bit about uh, what the soccer program consists of? I know about youth soccer, but I didn't ever know about this, so it's exciting to hear. Yeah, so it's a, uh, <coughs> the Howard Police Soccer Club is a, uh, a program that was started back in around 2012. Um, so we've been going approximately seven years now. And it started as a impromptu uh, gathering of some, of some local kids. Um, I was involved in, I've been involved in coaching youth soccer for, for years. And we were doing a f fall soccer. Fall soccer was, was ending. And uh, there was still a lot of, some of the kids wanted to continue playing soccer, but they, and they did not have a, a winter sport that they were playing. Uh, and I found that, you know, you know there was a, a, a little void uh, in some kids. They wanted to continue playing soccer. They didn't necessarily play a winter sport. And then there were also some kids that played winter sports, basketball, hockey, that still wanted to play some soccer throughout the winter. And um, so initially we started as uh, renting some, some, some time at, at, at the community center gym, uh, early, very early mornings on Saturdays, and uh, um, with, with like eight or ten kids, and we started playing, and then uh, word spread, and some more kids started playing, and, and eventually it grew to the point where uh, we, we could no longer do it within our time frame that we were allowed here at the community center because we had too many kids, and, and fortunate for us, the, uh, we were able to get the use of the uh, middle school, the uh, former middle school, we were able to get used to their gym. So we were able to, we, obviously the, the uh, constraints on that gym, they weren't getting used as much. So we, had to, we were able to block out the whole day of Saturday for the most part to, to have for our youth soccer program. Mm -hmm. And one of the primary reasons we started that program was uh, we just wanted, it was, I felt that it was a good way to um, engage with the youth in the community um, through the police department. Very positive and, uh, interactions. And have yep. positive interactions. Yep, so it's great. a uh, healthy options for the for the kids. Uh, we do it completely free of charge, um, uh, with uh, self funded through donations and the Howitch Police Association. Uh, and one of the primary reasons that uh, I felt that it was important to do something that was free of charge is that I didn't want to put. We didn't want to put. We feel it's very important that kids play multiple sports, and uh, and that kids have a lot of options. And uh, we, we don't want to monopolize on, on, on any particular sport. And we feel that the kids should experiment in, in all different activities, whether it be sports, arts, um, whatever it is. And uh, we felt that, you know, in looking at some other sports where they, you know, they charge a significant amount of money for it, when, when parents have to invest that kind of money, uh, they're kind of dedicated to that sport. And it kind of eliminates the, the you know, they tend to have to prioritize what their kids uh -huh. do. And I felt that if we, you know, if we had a, a program that was free of charge mm -hmm. and it was only on Saturday mornings, mm -hmm. we don't have practices during the week or anything like that. It's strictly Saturday mornings and we have games on Saturday mornings. So the kids are only, you know, they only have to really invest an hour a week in it. Uh, it would give the kids an opportunity to do all the other activities and still be able to play some soccer during the, during yeah, the week. Yeah. And, uh, we just feel it's very important that the kids are well-rounded and, and, and do a lot of things and, and mm -hmm. being able to engage in, with the community. And uh, we feel it's very important to make it a community um, mm -hmm. partnership mm -hmm. in that. So it's both boys and girls. So we do, we run our, our program is co-ed. Uh -huh. uh, boys and girls play together, which is, uh, w which is unique to us. We're one of the only mm -hmm. programs that really do that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I feel that it's, it's actually one of the more popular aspects of our program. The kids, the kids actually love it. And uh, so we do, we run and we play what's called futsal. And futsal is an indoor soccer sport. It's run, it's played basically on a basketball court. And, um, and uh, it's, it's pretty fast paced and exciting. Uh, so we do a league format and we have uh, kids from grades three to 12. So we have a, uh, a elementary school division that's grades three and four. 
we have a middle school division that's grades five to seven, and then we have the high school group, which is grades eight through 12. So they play at different times? They play at different mm -hmm. times. Our, our elementary school kids, they're, they're the early group. They start at eight o'clock on Saturday mornings, mm -hmm. and then we go throughout the day to the high school, and, mm -hmm. and we wrap up. Usually on our Saturdays, we wrap up about four o'clock in the afternoon with the high school games. So that's in the winter, and in yep. the spring, then, are you back outside? No, nope, we don't. We just, just our, our program for Howard's Police Soccer Club, we run, a, we run a, the futsal program in the winter. We start right after Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and uh, we wrap up generally right around the 1st of April, which we just wrapped up this past Saturday. I see. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then we also do, in the summertime, we do a beach soccer program, uh, Monday nights at Red River Beach. Which is, open oh. to, which is open to the public, and uh, we set up two sand courts uh, on, on uh, Red I River Beach. I think I've Beach. seen that over there. Yeah, yep. and we're open that we're there Monday nights. And, uh, I've always wondered and, uh, about it. Yep. This is but so it's a, great. Uh, it's a fun program. The whole thing is a fun program. Like I said, we started in 2012 with about you know, eight or nine kids mm. in the, in the, in the uh, community center gym. And uh, this past uh, winter, our program, we had 227 <sighs> kids in the program. Wow, yep. that and, uh, is fabulous. Our, our biggest age group right now is the middle school group, and, uh, and uh, the grade three and four is probably our smallest group, but we mm -hmm. still have, so we had about, we had five teams in the elementary school division. We had uh, 10 teams in the middle school division. We had eight, eight teams in the high school division. So to get more information, if people are interested in uh, being involved in this, yeah, they can check us out. We have uh, we we have a Twitter Twitter account, uh, How Much PD Soccer, and we have mm -hmm. uh, we're on Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always post updates whether it comes to registrations uh, for the programs to everything on the How Much Police Department Facebook page. Okay, okay. And if people don't have any of those social media, they can options, uh, they can email they can email us at soccer at okay. howichpolice.com. Okay. Very good yep. to know. And we just wrapped up our uh, our season this past Saturday, um, so we we run our league at the at the old middle school in Howitch, mm -hmm. and then uh, we always have our champion. Wow, what a great clip of the kids I playing know. ball. I know, yes. Uh, they look so professional, They My do. Jeez, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, that's and really the great. The gym looks beautiful. The gym looks beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice place for them to play. And uh, we thank Bob Brackett and Dinah for a great interview. That was uh, very interesting, informative. actually. Informative, yes. Very informative, yes. that's for sure. Uh, what do you have there, Eileen? Well, I know a lot of people look forward to this day in spring every year. Arbor Day 2019 Seedling Giveaway and it is being sponsored by the Town of Harwich Conservation Department on Friday, April 26th from 9 a.m. till noon. It will be held in the Town Hall parking lot at 732 Main Street, Harwich. Sorry, <laughs> my tongue got in the way. And if there is bad weather, they will be giving them away in the Town Hall foyer. And what are they offering, you ask? Well, they are offering pawpaw and persimmon trees, false indigo shrubs, Maidenhair fern plugs, and Northeast Pollinator Wildflower Seed Mix, which sounds lovely. Wow. And that's the poster gives you an idea of some of the colorful oh, wow. um, items they'll be offering. So that's Arbor Day Seedling Giveaway 2019, sponsored by Town of Howard's Conservation Department, Friday, April 26th, 9 in the morning till noon, Town Hall parking lot, or inside if it is raining in the Town Hall foyer. All right, let's see if we can get this out, Eileen. Yeah, that's okay. Go for it, Jack. Yeah, okay, very good. Well, here is a yearly event. Uh, it's called the Flushing of Our Water Supply, uh, or our water mains in the town. The Harwich Water Department will begin flushing water mains throughout the community beginning Monday, April 1st, which that's already happened, mm -hmm. and it goes through Friday, June 28th. So it's a long-term event because they do the whole town. 
uh, as weather permits. Flushing will take place on Monday through Friday uh, between the hours of 7 p.m. and 12 a.m. in the areas of East Howwich and South Howwich. I guess that's where they'll start. I'm not sure what happens after that. Um, the, the department will do everything, in its, uh, everything possible to minimize the disturbance during flushing periods. You need to watch for signs that will be posted notifying residents of flushing areas. They usually post them on the streets mm -hmm. and you can tell if your area is being flushed. It's recommended that residents set aside clean water for drinking and cooking uh, purposes should you experience discoloration. So just be on the lookout for that. Uh, temporary discoloration of the water and a chlorine taste is to be expected during the flushing period. Please check water for clarity prior to doing laundry. So just be aware of that. It only lasts, you know, a couple of days and uh, they apologize for any inconvenience. If you need additional information, call 508-432-0304. That's 508-432-0304. You can call from Monday through Friday from 8 o'clock a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Good to know. Yes, good to know. Yes, and something else that's good to know is if you are in the market for a two-bedroom affordable apartment, there are applications available now for number 185 Ridgewood Avenue in Hyannis. The uh, price, uh, the monthly <coughs> rent will be $1,343 a month with utilities not included. Apply now if you're interested. The Ready Renters Program is currently accepting applications for the Ridgewood residences now through April 16th uh, at 11 a.m. So mm -hmm. uh, you need to get on, on the stick, as they say, right, right. If, you, uh, if you're interested. Uh, contact or visit these locations to get an application or for more information. And they are. Get your pen and paper ready. Yarmouth Town Hall. 1146 Route 28 South Yarmouth, Monday through Friday from 8.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon. You can call them at 508-398-2231, extension 1275. Plymouth Redevelopment Authority, 508-747-1620, extension 10147. Again, the number is 508-747-1620, extension 10147 uh, and you can also get in touch with them at redevelopment at the symbol for at townhall.plymouth.ma.us and also for the Yarmouth Town Hall you can get in touch with them at www.yarmouth.ma.us or the third choice is to pick up an application yourself at Barnstable Town Hall the planning department on the third floor at 367 Main Street, Hyannis, or the Public Libraries in Barnstable, Mass. And they must be received by the Plymouth Redevelopment Authority, all of these applications. 26 Court Street, Plymouth, Mass, by April 16th at 11 a.m. And it's important for you to know that there are some uh, income limits, mm, um, according to, yes, yeah, the U.S. Yeah. HUD. Um, equal housing opportunity. Yeah, so. You have to actually qualify in a... In a yes, yeah, you do. Yeah. But you need to get the information. You got to get the information too. That's for sure. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Eileen. Um, we have a, a our usual great spot, our library update. Um, April vacation is right around. Uh, the I know it is. And uh, Emily Milan and Ann Carpenter are going to bring us up to date as to what's going to go on at the library. So let's take a look. I'm Emily Milan, Assistant Director at Brooks Free Library, and I'm here with my co-worker, Ann Carpenter, who's our Youth Services Librarian. We're here just to check in and let you know what's going on at the library during the month of April. So first of all, exciting news, and no, this is not an April Fool's joke, this time it's really going through. <laughs> Next Monday, April the 8th, the library will be closed uh, for the installation of our full building generator. So um, you won't have access to the library for our typical services, checking out books, that sort of thing. You can still log into your account from home to renew anything or to request materials. Um, and you can also access all of our electronic resources. But for Monday, April the 8th, the building itself will be closed to the public. Um, and then we have a really exciting week coming up after that. It's April Vacation Week. 
Yes, one of my favorite weeks of the year because it's, the weather is usually starting to get nicer, um, but there's also the potential that it will rain all week long. <laughs> so <laughs> if it does and you have a whole house full of kids who are not in school sitting around going, I'm bored, I'm bored, the library has your back because we have a ton of programs going on. Um, on Tuesday, April 16th, we are going to be doing a Stuff Your Own Stuffed Animal program at 2.30. It is a registration required program, so you do have to contact the library to sign up ahead of time, which you can do by calling either 508-430-7562, um, extension 2, or you can email me directly at acarpenter, like the woodworker, at clamsnet.org. Um, and both of those, that information is found on our website, of course, um, if you can't remember when you go to actually contact us. You have to sign up ahead of time, and we will be making a whole plethora of different um, choices to stuff the animals. And they came in yesterday, and Emily can confirm they are ridiculously cute. Yep. Um. I saw them <laughs> yesterday, and I'm really disappointed that I don't have a, a child this age group because they are so <laughs> cute. I'm really happy with them. Um, it, it is starting to fill up fast. We're about halfway through our sign-up period. So if, you're, if that's something that you're interested in, definitely contact the library to sign up for that. And then on Wednesday, the 17th, also at 2.30, we are going to do a Make Your Own Strawberry Shortcake program. Um, so I'm kind of excited about this one, too. I'm excited about all the programs. <laughs> um, we're going to give the kids strawberries with plastic knives, obviously, to cut them all up. And then um, we're going to have some pre-made sweet biscuits to put them on. And then the really fun part is making our own handmade um, whipped cream. Mm -hmm. So all of the children will be able to make their own whipped cream. And then, of course, we'll eat it, um, which is always great. Um, we do have the opportunity, if need be, to make it lactose-free or gluten-free or and other possibilities if you're allergic to any of the other ingredients. We can absolutely do our best to make those accommodations for you. Um, if you have any food sensitivities or food allergies or any questions about the program, again, contact me um, at acarpenter at clamsnet.org. And then on Thursday at 1 o'clock, we're going to be doing a movie matinee of the popular new film, um, Ralph Breaks the Internet. <laughs> so that will be fun. And then Friday, um, and that will be at 1 o'clock, um, the Ralph Breaks the Internet. On Friday, we are going to have part one <laughs> of our stuffed animal sleepover. We've been doing this every year for the last several years. It is so much fun. So anytime the library is open from 10 to 4 on Friday, you can drop off a stuffed animal. And then when the library closes, we're going to give a camera to all of the stuffed animals. And that way they can document what they get up to that night. So once all the humans have left the library, the stuffed animals are going to take over and have a really good time. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So then on Saturday at 2.30, you can come back to the library, pick up your stuffed animal, and watch a slideshow showcasing all of the shenanigans that the stuffed animals have gotten themselves up to. Um, so that's going to be a full week of lots of fun and great programs. In addition to our regular programs that are for preschools that we run during the week, which includes Mother Goose on the Loose on Mondays at 10.30, preschool projects on Wednesdays at 10.30, and our regular story time on Fridays at 10.30. So a lot of different things that you can do. And then I also want to put a um, heads up on the, on the I'm bored that the library not only has books and movies, but we also have video games. And my personal favorite, which is board games, that you can check out and bring home. So if you have um, a lot of free time on your hands because the kids are out of school, now's a great time to try out a bunch of board games that you haven't had a chance to check out before. Um, and we also have maker kits, which have a whole bunch of different um, materials that you can use to make something. So you can learn how to knit and how to do different crafts and things. And speaking of arts and crafts, I know um, we're coming into Art Week. That's right. So that's the, we'll wrap up April um, talking about Art Week. April the 26th through May the 5th is Art, uh, Art Week here in Harwich and across the state. And there are tons of programs. Um, that we you know want to to mention but the two in particular that we're going to focus on today because we'll come back closer to art week and give you a full rundown on everything the library has planned but for today I just want to mention two programs that do require registration and the registration just opened yesterday for both of these programs the first program is um, bullet journal uh, bu bullet journals for beginners so if you haven't heard of a bullet journal before it's actually kind of a neat um, like analog 
it's a combination of a planner and a calendar and goal tracking or goal setting. Um, you can do journaling, all sorts of things. Uh, you can basically create whatever it is that you want to document the things that you have going on in your life. For example, I have a bullet journal just for my garden. So my husband and I have started seeds that we plan on planting outside in our, in our raised beds. And we kind of track everything there. And then I have a separate one for work that tracks my appointments and events and all of the things that we have planned. So um, this bullet journal is a really fun way. I know people have asked, I've done this program once before, and people said, do you still use your phone for your calendar? And yes, I do for some appointments still use my phone um, because it's handy to have that with me. But the bullet journal is just a nice way for me to get my thoughts down on paper, and I really enjoy using it. So I'm going to be teaching a class on the basics of bullet journaling. That's scheduled for Tuesday, April the 30th at 1.30. Um, it is about an hour long, and you do have to register. You can register for that either by emailing or calling me, or a really fast way is to go right to the event calendar on our website, locate the event on Tuesday, April the 30th, and there's a link right there. It will collect your name, email address, and phone number, and you're all set. You're registered for the program. So the second program that requires registration is scheduled for Saturday, May the 4th. This is one of our wrap-up events for Art Week, which, which ends on the 5th, Sunday, May the 5th. So on Saturday, May the 4th at 1 o'clock, um, we're hosting MJX Artworks, a local artist, who's coming in to teach uh, printing with jelly plates. So I really wish I brought one as an example. i have to bring that next time I come. They're really neat, um, but you can use them to do all kinds of mono printing. So you use a gelatin slab, you create your design, and you can use it to make cards, paper, all sorts of things. So um, that is scheduled for Saturday the 4th at 1 o'clock. Again, it does require registration, uh, which you can access right on our event calendar by finding the event and clicking the Register Here button. Or you can call us at the library at 508. 430-7562 and we'll help you register over the phone. So like I said, we'll be back later in the month of April to go over that full list of events for Art Week, but we want to give you a little preview and let you know about those programs that do require registration. Uh -oh. So quick recap, the library will be closed on Monday, April the 8th um, while we're having the generator installed and then the following week is April vacation. Um, so Monday the 15th is Patriots Day, but from Tuesday through Saturday, Anne has a full lineup of events for you and the family. Please stop by and join us for something. We hope to see you soon. I can't believe what they have planned for the kids wow. on their vacation this yes. April. Yes, rain or shine, rain take or shine. advantage oh, absolutely. of the opportunities that the library is giving you. Just wonderful, wonderful vacation. things we, to do. Wow, Folks, that's our show for this week. We are, on behalf of all of us here at Channel 18, we're very happy that you joined us. Thank you so much. Yes, and please take advantage of all of the things going on around town here in Harwich. Very good. Thanks, Eileen. Bye-bye for now. Bye.